Our second mission to the Philippines, the 1st of October, 2002, narrated by David Clark. This is the audio version of the book Before the Cock Crows, which is in three parts. This is the first part, which is like the daily diary of the mission. I arrived at Manila Airport, October the 2nd, Tuesday morning at 1.30 a.m. Philippine time. And that was where I met Reverend Lucas Dungatton and two of his helpers, who we called our Trojan Warriors, Manny and Fernando Perez. We took a jeepney ride to our accommodation offered by Sister Neola Lizardo of McCall God's Grace Ministries at Soriano Compound Putartan, which was comprised of a lovely primitive room, but also a large upper room laid out in preparation for the team to stay. The team from England was due to arrive in a few days, which consisted of Gordon Smith, Alistair Sutherland, Andy McDonnell, Catherine Parr and Richard Kent. This accommodation had been arranged by Lucas Dangatton, for which we were very grateful. I consider this to be the provision of God and I was delighted with it. I spoke the peace of God on the house and this place, according to the scriptures in Matthew 10, 12. However, a problem did arise later. The next morning after the team had arrived, Dr. Richard Kent, who had come with us on this mission, found his camp bed too fragile and his weight broke the bed. He suggested that he and Gordon move to new accommodation in a local hotel somewhere to be in comfort and suggested we did likewise. It was then I recalled the scripture not to move from house to house as in Luke 10 7 and remain in the same house eating and drinking such things as they gave for the labourer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house and also eat what is ever set before you asking no questions. I also felt it would seem that we were ungrateful if we were to move from the house of our host who had gone to so much trouble in preparing for us. It was then I decided and informed Gordon that we would not be moving, so we stayed and enjoyed our stay. On reflection, I think it could be said that I was led by the Spirit, that is, by the principles of what the Spirit had written in the Scripture. 2nd of October Our host had problems. Reverend Lucas P. Dangatton informed me of the marital problems between Neola, a host of God Grace Ministries, and her husband Robert Lissardo, a pastor, as they had been living apart since April 2002. Neola was a missionary from America, working in New Bilby Prison, and had met Robert there as he was a former inmate. Robert had become a Christian, and he and Neola were married. This was 13 years previously and Robert had two children from a former marriage living at their Soriano compound in Putartan. It was their intention to run this as a halfway house to help inmates who had become Christians with somewhere to live upon leaving prison. I spoke to Sister Neola at a convenient time about her separation and to put her mind at rest as I was very sympathetic to such problems and would assist them both as best I could. As I too had experienced marital difficulties and gone through divorce. Sister Neola had given me permission to mention this in my diary as such difficulties affects Christians as well as non-believers. It turned out to be a very serious problem as it was alleged by Neola that Robert had a relationship with another woman and she wanted a divorce from him, which was not allowed in the Philippine law. So they had been living separately since April 2002 and did not know how to go forward or deal with her problems. Robert Lissardo, being a former inmate of New Bilibid Prison and Neola, had been working together in the ministry and this had caused them both a problem as they no longer worked together. Neola later alleged that he had married her for her money. It was stated that this was his way of getting support whilst in prison, 
as his former partner could not do so. It was alleged that Robert ordered her to marry another man so that he could be free to marry Neola. Neola stated this was a former marriage and so his marriage to her was bigamy, which was a crime in the Philippine law. This had taken place 13 years ago. It was suggested that bigamy carried a 6 to 12 year prison sentence for Robert, her husband, and would result in an annulment of their marriage. This I mentioned later after my interview with Robert himself. McCall's God Grace Ministries was registered in the Philippines and Robert was an incorporator along with four other incorporators and the property at Soriano Compound was owned by him. And any such annulment or divorce would result in very serious legal battles over property and the use of McCall's God Grace Ministries at Soriano Compound. Neola had worked with Lucas to prepare our dormitory for the team that was due to arrive. And we had arranged for our team, including Neola and Robert's two children, to go on a seven day tour of Angeles, Alongapo and Baguio cities to preach the gospel in the city jail along with William Pollock. Robert stated he wanted to be involved and come with us, but Neola objected which caused a problem to us all. This was a matter that needed to be resolved. On my return home from the prison the next day, I sought the mind of God with reference to Robert and Neola, and I believed I had received an answer, which I felt could be put to Robert and Neola and not involve the team. I had said within myself, I did not wish to judge this issue, but would do so if need be, but wanted the wisdom of Solomon. I believe God gave me the answer. On my arrival, I informed Neola I felt I had a solution. She informed me that Gordon and the others were already dealing with it at the moment and perhaps I should go and join them. Andy McDonald informed me that they had sorted out the problem with Robert as a team and it was decided Robert was not to go with us on the seven day tour as it would not be right. I expressed I felt it was a wrong decision and wanted to share my view with the team as I believed they were wrong and also believed that I had the answer from God. It was suggested that I ought not to change things that have been agreed by the team. I understood that Gordon, Alistair, Andy, Neola and Catherine had accepted Gordon was correct in his understanding of things and it would be wrong for me to interfere if I disagreed. I felt Gordon's decision was wrong, as such issues should have been discussed with me. This was because the team had done something in the corner without my knowledge. I felt such a decision gave fresh occasion for the devil in Robert's life, and we should consider the weaker brother. I was told I was wrong and I didn't listen that this was one of my problems. It seemed that my views were so different to theirs. I did things differently to them. I maintained I was very swift to hear. According to the scripture, it says that we should be swift to hear. So swift that they had not realised I'd heard and I understood. It so happened that before they realised it, I had another point of view. I suggested I should in future wait to the next day to give my answer to such problems as this would help them not conclude that I appeared to have an answer to everything. I would try to do this as it appears to some I thought I was always right and argued about everything. It was suggested that I had a wrong spirit and I was demonised. I felt I must try to be slower to respond with my views and opinions in order for others not to get the wrong picture. The solution I had was to reason with Robert and ask him to decide not to come as a goodwill gesture and as a sign that he acknowledged his wife had a problem. That I did not wish to judge their marital affair but would help them if asked. I learned later from Alice who texts me from the UK in later November that it was Gordon and Garney who had decided Robert was not to go with us 
on the seven-day trip to Baguio. The decision that was made had its serious repercussions that we will look at later. The decision proved very damaging to me on our return from Baguio, as Robert took offence at me thinking I had made the decision to exclude him as he wanted to go to Baguio, as all his family lived there and he wanted to join our mission. I was no stranger to divorce. I had experienced divorce and all the problems associated with divorce and as a result was able to put into writing my experience from what I had learned from scripture about divorce and the roles of men and women in a marriage relationship and also in the church and society. I had written a section in my book Mary Mary Quite Contrary entitled A Fresh Look at Christian Marriage, all of which was prompted by the elders of a church I had attended at the time that I heard that Michael had become a Christian about divorce and the roles of men and women in a marriage relationship and also in the church and society. All as the result of the church I had been attending at that time when I heard of Michael's conversion to Christianity that the elders of that church had decided they were going to allow women to be elected as elders. When I informed these elders they were going against the New Testament scriptures on this subject, I was told to keep quiet. This was the deciding factor in me withdrawing from them and going on to write my book, Mary Mary Quite Contrary, or alternatively, Does the Lord Jesus Want Women to Rule as Elders in His Church? Click to view. In this book, I deal with the only grounds of divorce in a Christian marriage and show that marriage was ordained by God to reflect the relationship between Christ and his church. And it was after that that I wrote my book, Converted on LSD Trip. All of this meant, together with my current marital problems with my second wife, that I had some experience and qualified to some degree in looking at Neola and Robert Lissardo's marital problems. As the story unfolds, it will be seen that Robert, for his own reasons, sought to have David Clark, the director of Trojan Horse Mission, deported as an undesirable alien in the Philippines. But in the end, became firm friends as I sought to help him with his very serious problems.